Thank you, Lord of God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank for everyone that is here, oh God, because everybody is subjected under your power, oh God. We cancel every form of fear, every form of anxiety. We cancel them in the name of Jesus. Any suggestion that have been sent to any person in the mighty name of Jesus, any diabolical suggestion, any diabolical idea that things are going wrong, we cancel them in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare the goodness of God. We declare the words of God. We declare what God has spoken over our lives through our prophet. We declare it is working in us. It is working for us. It is working in our families, even in our business, in our ministry. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, we know that those that call your name, they don't end up in shame. And tonight, even as we call your name, our heavens are open in the name of Jesus. Father, we honor your name, even for our prophet. We honor you for giving us the best in the land, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, take over in Jesus' mighty name amen and amen sister zando please take over and lead us you reign you ancient zion king kadosh kadosh you are mighty on your throne oh you reign you ancient zion king Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Oh, oh, oh you reign, you ancient Zion King. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. 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 Oh, oh, oh you reign. You ancient Zion King. Kadosh, Kadosh. You are mighty on your throne. Oh Lord, you reign, you ancient Zion King, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Lord, we love you, you are good. Lord, we love you. You are good, Lord, we love you. You are good, Lord, we love you. You are good, oh, Lord, we praise you. You are good, Lord, we praise you. You are good, oh, Lord, we praise you. You are good, Lord, we praise you. You are good. Oh, Lord, we love you. You are good. Lord, we love you. You are good. Oh, Lord, we love you. You are good. Lord, we are God. Oh, Lord, we praise you. You are God. Oh, Lord, we praise you. You are God. Oh, Lord, we praise you. You are good. 
Oh God, thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Sister Zando. That is powerful. I want to welcome Minister Emery. Please welcome and lead us in some moment of worship. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. You are Yahweh, hey, hey. you are Yahweh, hey, hey. you are Yahweh, oh, you are Yahweh, hey, hey. you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha. Don't make you are Yahweh, you are Yahweh, hey, hey. you are Yahweh, hey, hey. you are Yahweh, oh, you are Yahweh, hey, hey. you are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega, oh. You are Yahweh, Alpha and Omega. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, yes, you remain the same. Ancient of days, as old as old as you are, but you remain the same. As yet of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you remain the same. As yet of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, Lord, you remain the same. As yet of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you remain the same, Lord. As shed of days, love, as old as you are, as old as you are, Lord, Lord, you remain the same, Lord, you never change, as shed of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, Lord, you remain the same. You are Alpha and Omega, Lord. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Lord, you are Alpha, the beginning and the end. You are the Omega. We worship you, our Lord. You're worthy to be praised. We give you all our glory. We worship you, Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory, God. We give you all the glory, Jesus, Jesus. You deserve. You are worthy to be praised. 
We lift you higher and higher and higher, Lord. Let your presence go down. Your glory comes down. Lord, we lift you higher, higher, Lord. Yes, higher, Lord. As the presence goes, your glory comes down. A shed of tears, it's all as you were. It's all as you were. Lord, you remain the same. Ancient of days, as old as you are. As old as you are, you remain the same. Ancient of days, as old as you as old as you are, Lord, Lord, you remain the same. And shed of days, as old as you are, Lord, as old as you are, you remain the same. Lord, you remain the same. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are Yahweh. Oh, you are Yahweh. You are Yahweh. Alpha and Omega. You are Yahweh, Alpha. You are Yahweh, oh Lord. Yes, you are Yahweh, God. We call you Yahweh. Lord, you never change. You remain the same. You are Yahweh, Alpha. Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha, Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha, and Omega, you are Yahweh, Alpha, and Omega. Amen. Amen. Wow, that's powerful. Father, we thank you. We honor you for this moment. In this platform, we call you your way. We call you Yahweh for every nation that is represented here, oh God. We call you Yahweh for every family, every individual that is represented here, oh God. We honor you even for this platform that you have been enlightened and awakened into your realities, oh God. We honor your name in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much, Minister Emery. Thank you, Sister Dando. That was so powerful. I want to welcome all of you that are here tonight. I want to, to tell you, be ready for tonight. It's going to be powerful. Kindly share this broadcast. Invite somebody, invite your family. Don't just partake of this alone. Last week, we saw what happened. Please allow someone else to partake of this too. It's going to be another realm in the name of Jesus Christ. And tonight, we want to welcome our prophet, our father, our man of God, who 
whom we love so much. He has sacrificed for us for so long. Many of us, we came looking for a prophet, but we ended up getting more than what we could think about. We ended up receiving the very mind of God about our destinies, about our families, our children, our businesses and ministry. And we have been so privileged to receive the heavenly realities in our life. And so tonight, our hearts are overjoyed. Our hearts are so glad that we have our Father who is always here every week to dine with us, to come and give us the very mind of God. So I want you to say something about the chosen servant of God in this platform. Please write something there. Let him know that you love him. Let him know what you feel in your heart about him. Please write it there. Uh, because we have the very best. Prophet, we love you so much. We really, really love you. And oh, we are waiting for you in Kenya. We are so expectant, waiting for you. And it's such, such a privilege to always have you in this platform to hear the mind of God from you. It's such a privilege and a joy. So welcome, Prophet. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. Thank you yes. so very much. You are such a blessing to me and also to Global Prophetic Network. And like uh, we, we said yesterday, yesterday when we had a discussion, I told you that you are for the nations. Uh, Amen. I bless God for the unique grace you carry. And I honor God for you so much. I welcome Amen. all of you Global Prophetic Network members across the nations of the world. Tonight, we have people joining us from the U.S., people joining us from Kenya, people joining us from Canada, people joining us from Germany. I have uh, my South African family also joining us. Uh, people are joining us from the U.K., U.S., across the nations of the world. I want you to just take a few minutes and just give a shout out to somebody. Just tell somebody... You love the person, good to see the person, just exchange pleasantries on the comment session as I get my thoughts together to be a blessing to you. I see you, Joan and Nancy. Joan, you've been quiet, but I hope you are well. God bless you. Love you so much. God bless you. I see um, Caroline in Ganga. God bless you so much. Caroline says, good to see you, Global Prophetic Network. Okay. Kuzana says, greetings to our U.S. family. Let me tell you guys, this year we have to set a target for ourselves. Um, so the U.S. family, you have to rake in a lot of people. You have to get a lot of membership from that side. But very soon, Stella Agara will be coming to the U.S. and she needs a family to, to go into <laughs> So God bless all of you. And of course, Ghana is fully represented here. Ghana is fully represented here. Emmanuel is here. Ama is here. Prophetic place was somewhere. Melody. Melody is also here. Um, art is also here. iPhone is also here. Minefe is also here. So Ghana is heavily represented and of course your stool is also represented here from ghana god bless all of you i don't know how many of you are ready for tonight but tonight will be a high voltage prayer high voltage prophetic intercession i want you to just type it high voltage a nigerian prophet to say it will be acidic and corrosive tonight will be acidic and corrosive Guys, how many of you love Emery? Emery is such an amazing vessel. And Emery, are you are you on the page? Are you on the Global Prophetic Network page? Please. I'm not, I guess I'm not. Okay, so I'll, I will add you as soon as we finish the meeting. Emery has come up with um, a few singles that um, I would want you to get your hands on and listen to. Emery is such a blessing such a blessing such a blessing and guys let me tell you something i am busy right here in ghana we just acquired a new place and we are putting the place together feast of the prophet 2021 all of you are coming to ghana by fire by force 
by yeah. fire, by force. I'm flying you. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be a, a, a chartered flight. All of you. The, the will, be, will be going Amen. through the nations of the world, picking all of you. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, make plans. It's in, uh, it's in December, the first week in December. So make plans. <laughs> because Anna says I'm relocated to Ghana. It is well. So I want you to uh, make it a part of your plan that you are coming to Ghana for the greatest feast of all times, the feast of the prophets. God bless all of you. Tonight, listen to me, we are going to do season two of last week. And uh, I want you to understand that we are not in normal times. This morning, Pastor Faye shared with me the news of the demise of another person in Kenya. And uh, this week in particular, uh, Kenya lost some men of God uh, from this COVID thing. And uh, it's not even funny anymore. But as we, as we commence with the families and as we, we share felicitations and pray for the family, it is important for us to be able to discern the times and the seasons we find ourselves. Listen to me, child of God, if there's ever a season for you to intensify prayer, it is this season. If there is ever an age in your work with God where you have to step up in whatever it is you are doing for God, it is this season. You can't afford to sit on the sidelines and just watch and spectate. You will be victimized. You will be victimized. Satan will just, Satan will just get you. And so it is very important. Sometimes um, I look at how, especially in 2020, 2020, when we started Global Prophetic Network or late 2019, and how many of you were very active because you were afraid uh, the end was coming. You, you were afraid that the rapture was going to happen. So you were so on fire. Suddenly, we entered 2020 and you didn't die. So we said, okay, things are now back to normal. And your prayer life is now, it's now going to go. Listen, you can't afford to slack. You can't afford to slack. You can't afford to tone down on your prayers for prevailing prayers. That is why this month in March in particular, there are a few things I've seen in the spirit, which is not very pleasant. It is not very pleasant. That is why we are seriously mounting up a very strong force against the onslaughts of the enemy. Tonight we will pray. I want you to type and just convince your neighbor you will pray. Fella said, not me, O prophet. I was just thirsty, not afraid. I hear you. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are going to pray. We will pray. I'll make sure you pray. I'll make sure you pray. Last week, I enjoyed it. Many of you, got, I saw you had, you had gotten off your seat because your chairs were limiting you. And I saw you standing up and firing prayer. And I believe that tonight will be another dimension. I want you to close your eyes with me. Father, in Jesus' name, I declare that let praise be made available for tonight's meeting. Speak to us out of the volumes of the book. Stir up our spirits and cause us to buy into the mind of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And somebody who believes in God shouts, Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 18, verse, Luke chapter 18, verse 1, 2, and 3. We are talking about prayer. And last week, I made a very strong argument against the spirit of Herod. I told you for those of you who were, who were not with us last week, I told you that Paul raises a very strong disclaimer. He says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. And then he says, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I told you that my assignment within last week and this week is not even to worry myself about the principalities and the powers and even the rulers of darkness. My assignment is to narrow in and expose the evil onslaughts of what we call spiritual wickedness. Spiritual wickedness. And that particular verse in Ephesians chapter 6 talks about the hierarchy of the enemy, the hierarchy of Satan. One of the things you have to understand is this. Satan is not an apazard enemy. Satan is very calculative. 
Satan is very systematic. Satan is very regimented. And so if you must be able to topple over him and deal with him and, and seek the victories that you need, you need to know the enemy you are fighting with. Paul speaking to the church in Corinth says that lest he takes advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. That means that in this last days, to be ignorant of satanic devices is to see your destiny sinking. But tonight, I declare you will not sink anymore. Amen. Ah, your amen is looking for my trouble. Amen. 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 You will not sink anymore. Amen. 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 It is extremely important to stay ignorant is to cheaply donate your destiny into resignation. Many of you are not going after knowledge and therefore you are tossed about to and fro by every wind and doctrine. It is extremely important, Paul says, so that he does not take advantage of us we are not ignorant of his devices. We are not ignorant of his devices. The word devices comes from the Greek rendition methodia, methodia, or methodia, or metal. It is the Greek word out of which we got the word metal. So he says that lest Satan gains advantage over us, we are not ignorant of his methods. Satan has methods. Satan has methods. He is methodical. I got this word right after all. He is methodical. Satan is methodical. Uh, I'm going to say it again because I got it. Satan is methodical. Somebody say methodical. <laughs> so it is important for you to understand that Satan doesn't just act. Many of you you should be following my thoughts and just don't listen. Imbibe my understandings because you are not looking at a novice. I didn't just pop up. I have a pedigree in God. I have worked with God for more than two decades. I, I have a bit of in-depth knowledge about God, about his ways. So you are not in the wrong place at all. And if you are affiliated to me, I assure you that you are in the right place. I say this to let you know, ladies and gentlemen, that one of the things I have revealed about Satan every time is that whenever the believer sees what he calls satanic attacks, to the devil, it is not the time the believer notices it or the time the believer diagnoses the attack, it's not the time Satan actually launched the attack. Jesus giving us a parable to this effect, he says, a man sowed a good seed in his field. Whilst men slept, his enemy came to sow tears. His enemy came to sow tears. Now, when they got up, they saw when the blade has sprung up or when it was time for harvest, they saw the tears also. So the seed of the tears was in the time of the harvest, but the planting of the enemy was done long ago. This is a revelation of the mystery of Satan. Before you see satanic attacks, what you should know is that that attack has been launched already. That is why, again, it is very, very dangerous for you to sleep whilst you should be watching. The reason why God has set some of us as watchmen over the destinies of men. He has set us as watchmen over the destinies of nations is that by the by the ministry of the watchman we are able to preempt and predict satanic attacks even before they are launched we have become the microscopic uh, uh, devices of the enemy or the telescopic device of, of 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 the enemy so before they hatch the plan god reveals it I remember last year, I called a daughter of mine, she's in Kenya, and I told her, you know what, I saw COVID on you. This lady, you know, she remarked, she said, ah, prophet, no, 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 it can't happen, I'm so careful, I'm so careful. I said, okay, you don't pray, you will call me, you look for me. After about two months, she now calls me, prophet, what you said came to pass. And then she sent me a picture and she was already in uh, nasal prongs, or what we call uh, oxygen. 
and then we have to pray for her and all that by God's grace she she has been out of the ICU and she's recuperating but some of us can avoid some of these things if we were alert if we were watchful again let me say this don't sleep especially within the first half of this year don't sleep take your prayer to the next level and I would wish that everyone that is connected to me will make it a duty we make it a duty to wake up between 12 midnight and 2 a.m. just to fire prayer. When you are able to do that, 12 a.m. to 2 a.m., 12 midnight to 2 a.m., you will stop many satanic attacks against your destiny. Are you listening to me so far? So back to yeah. my message, Paul said that unless he takes advantage of us, we are not ignorant of his devices. Again, there is a statement I keep saying, and I will say it till you get it. Satan does not mind you praying if he knows that your prayers will not be answered or if he knows that your prayers are not effective. The effectiveness of prayer is not within what we call the charismatic domain. We are in the season where many of you are so charismatic. Let me tell you something. If there's ever, is, if there's ever an enemy that is charismatic, it is Satan. Satan is very, very charismatic. That is why somebody like Beyonce will be performing on stage and uh, Shasha Fierce will manifest and people will be slain. That is why somebody like Michael Jackson will be performing on stage and just by his moonwalk or catwalk or whatever work that that guy does, people will be slain. Why? Because people have been thrown into what we call euphoria and frenzy. And that is a depiction of charismatism. The effectiveness of prayer is not within the domain of charismatism. The effectiveness of prayer is within the ambits or within the remits and within the scope of the word of God. Look at the Bible. Look in chapter number 18. Let's get into the word of God. Are you still with me so far? Yes. Okay. Look in chapter number 18. Selagara um, just project it again uh, so that uh, I can just read from the screen. Don't get my device. Thank you, precious Jesus. Okay, look at chapter number 18. He says, and he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Jesus spoke a parable, and the parable is to this end. He says, the sum total of the parable he spake was to accentuate a certain point or, or to depict a certain uh, principle in the kingdom. And the principle is that, is that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Ladies and gentlemen, that means that every believer who sees prayer as an option has actually donated his human self to unnecessary satanic attacks. Hear this. He said, men ought to pray always. That means that if you identify as a man, and when we talk about man, we are talking about, we are talking about it in a generic sense, uh, so that the feminists who on this call will not uh, crucify me. Uh, so every human, if you identify as a human, he said that you have to pray and not to faint. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. And it is very important for you to get this. Jesus is not just the son of God. Jesus actually is God who came on earth as a man. Now, as a God in heaven, when he was not on earth, he has sovereignty at his disposal. He does not go on consultation with anybody. He does anything at his will. But as soon as he came, he... He entered the realm of the earth. He was governed by the principles of the earth. Remember again that in Psalm 115, I believe a system, the Bible said, the earth he has given to men. So this earth is the earth of men. The earth he gave to the sons of men. Psalm, I believe Psalm 115, if you can just project that scripture. Quickly, so that we can just advance. Somebody do shut that. Hit that. 
Psalm 115 verse 16, if you see it. Thank you, Holy Spirit of God. Okay, so it says, the heaven, even the heavens are the laws. <laughs> but the earth has he given to the children of men. So the earth is the earth of men. I'm going to make a very important statement. I'm sure your pastor will not tell you this, but I'm going to tell you. He says, the earth he gave to the sons of men. And Jesus is saying that anyone that identifies as a man on earth ought to pray. Ought to pray. Watch this. Why would you have to pray when you are on earth? Because Jesus, as he was teaching the disciples what we call the preamble of prayer, he says, and when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Now, it is only within the instrumentation of prayer that a man is able to enforce the will of heaven on earth. Can I say it again? The will of God will forever remain a mirage until a man has the audacity and a man has the understanding to pray. Many of you have had clues through revelations, through prophecies, through dreams and through visions about the blueprints of your next level. Some of you saw yourself in a dream as millionaires. You saw yourself in a dream being married. You saw yourself in a dream do, doing ministry. Now these are, these are figments of the will of God as he gave you pictorial images of the will, what he wills for you. But these things will become a charade and will become a mirage if you are unable to pray them into reality. Now, you see, for the life of me, I will never be able to understand why, if, why believers go like they are hurt because they have prayed and nothing is happening. You see, ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing like nothing is happening. When a man prays, something happens. When a man prays, let me say this, and, and let it settle in your heart. When you pray, something happens. Let me do a rendition of what I'm saying. The Bible says that Elijah had told the, the servant, go and watch because I am doing inter prophetic intercession. I've given a prophetic word that there's going to be an abundance of rain. But you see, for a prophetic word to come to pass, there has to be a man that will pray the prophetic word into being. So my servant, just go up to the seashore and just go and watch because I will be praying. And the Bible says that Elijah entered into the posture of labor as he placed his head between his knees and started praying and traveling. And as he prayed and traveled, he told the servant, do you see anything? He said nothing. He said nothing. Then the man of God said, go again. Because see, when a man prays, the clouds gather. The fact that the clouds are not conspicuous does not mean nothing is happening. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, hear this and you will you understand when I say this. By the time Satan has convinced you that nothing is happening, why is he convincing you if he knows that nothing is happening? He is convincing you to stop praying. Because the more you pray, the more you populate the heavens with clouds. You see? And the Bible said, if the clouds be full of rain, if the clouds be full of rain, it empties itself. Rain does not fall until the clouds have fully formed. And clouds fully form when you persevere in prayer. Sometimes I know you don't feel like it, but you still have to pray. You see, I told you a story, and I'm just, I'm just doing a, a few details. I'll still come to the main road. Now, James said something very powerful in James. He said that is any man afflicted, let him pray. Now, if I was there and James was writing this epistle, I would tell you, excuse me, sir, do you know what you are saying? 
because uh, the, 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 the environment that doesn't facilitate prayer is the environment of affliction. When a man is afflicted, he is hurt. He is bruised. When a man is hurt, he is emotionally drained. When a man is hurt, when a man is afflicted, he is mentally unstable. And in that season, that man doesn't have any tenacity to pray bad. James says that in that season, pray. That means that when you don't feel like praying, pray. Because it is in your not feeling like praying that you have to pray. And when you pray in that season, what you do is that you are able to switch the seasons to work for your favor. I'm not talking to somebody here. You guys are too quiet on me today. Oh, yes, you are. Amen. Are you listening to me at all? Hmm. So he said that he's anyone. Okay, thank you, Stella, so much for this. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. Then he says, then let them pray over him and let blah, 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 blah. Okay, verse 13 says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Listen, in 20 years of doing ministry in various means, in various capacities, I have this, this I have discerned that a man has two seasons of his life. If I three seasons, I beg your pardon. The season of your affliction, the season of your breakthrough, and your due season. Now, all these seasons must see prayer. If you break through, don't say, I've broken through, so I'm not praying. It takes prayer to sustain a breakthrough because a man gets more enemies when he breaks through than when he has not broken through. Many of you are afflicted now and you have a lot of enemies. Some of them are even in the churches you attend just because you bought a car. Just because you got married. Just because you started a business. Now at the time you didn't have these things, your enemies were few. Now when you got them, you have harvested a lot of them. So you have to understand that prayer is a necessity for survival. Listen, people, listen, listen. No matter what you do in this life, don't let Satan get an inch of your time. Don't let Satan get a second of your time. Some of you take too long to recover. You take too long to bounce back. You take too long to boomerang because, see, you are hurt. Yes, we know you are hurt. So the Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. We, we all go through such periods in our walk with God when our expectations were so high that we knew that the miracle was going to happen within the next 24 hours. And if it doesn't happen, we gave ourselves certain allowance. Say, okay, maybe it will happen within 24 hours. Maybe it will happen within 72 hours. And when it doesn't happen, we still will want to say, well, okay, God, I'm going to trust you for the next maybe one, one week. And when it doesn't happen one week, we say, Lord, we can do it for one month. After one month, then our heart gets sick. When a heart is sick, hope has been deferred. Hope has been broken. Expectation has been broken. And do you know what? It is the fatal season for depression. It is the fatal season for suicidal tendencies. It is the fatal season of fright. And, uh, and anger. It is those seasons where a man's heart is polluted with carnality. And if you are not careful, within that season, you will mess up all the years of, 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 of blessing that God has given you. Am I talking to somebody here today? Mm -hmm. Yes. Prayer is a necessity for survival. So Jesus told them a parable and then he said that men always ought to pray and not faint. You see, one of the things that, that, will, that will ground a... Listen, let me say this. Let me say it well. An attack to your prayer life is a real attack. Satan doesn't attack your money till he attacks your prayer life. Mm. By that time, you are seeing ripple effects in your marriage, in your relationship, in your ministry. Don't start fixing the relationship. Start fixing your prayer life. Mm. Because when you fix your prayer life, your prayer life will fix the issue that got the ripple effect. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Oh, yes. You see, he says, men, 
always ought to pray and not faint. Fainting is so pervasive in these last days. And you see, I, 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 I again, I blame the preachers. I blame the preachers because you see, when we talked about faith, we didn't talk to you about what we call comprehensive gospel. Mm -hmm. we, 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 because of our arterial motives and because of our gains in the ministry, we were not careful to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that Christianity is a comprehensive package. Comprehensive package in the sense that there will be times you will cry. There will be mm -hmm. times your heart will be broken. There'll be times you will feel like all oh, hell is breaking loose. It is part of Christianity. Listen, it doesn't mean you did it. Okay, guys, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. What, what wrong did Job do to God? What wrong did Job do? Job became an unfortunate victim of God's bragging rights. Oh, yes. No, no, guys, I mean, come on here. God, I believe he was drinking Kenya tea. He got into his head. And as the sons of God had come up to worship, Satan came with him, with them. And listen, listen, guys, R read that account carefully. What the, what the account suggests is that Satan had been attacking or Satan had been so. Uh, uh, patrolling around uh, Job every time, but every time he sees that the hedge around Job is intact. So he has been doing that for some time and has given up on Job. So he was not on the hit list on Job anymore till God said, have you conceded my servant Job? Hmm. The man didn't do anything wrong. God wanted to God wanted to feel good about himself. <laughs> so he suggests an innocent man, a God-loving man, a, a God-honoring man, a righteous man to a season of excruciating affliction just so God will be validated that he's God. Sometimes your afflictions is not because you sinned. Your affliction is not because you did anything wrong. You didn't do anything wrong. Satan will still come at you. Because see, by the time you are recovering from that satanic attack, you will, ladies and gentlemen, you will get, you will get a ministry. God gets his glory. You will learn a lesson. And then you will be a mentor to somebody that is beginning that journey. Am I talking to somebody here? So we have to tell you that Christianity has twists and turns. We have to tell you that it is a roller coaster. We have to tell you that it is not a cozy ride. So that by the time, read your Bible. The Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Then it said that so that you may be able to withstand the evil day. He didn't say so that you may, you may be able to... Uh, escape the evil day. He didn't say that so that you, be able, you may be able to defend the evil day. He said that so that you'll be able to withstand. Then he says, having done all, stand. That means that, ladies and gentlemen, evil day will come, whether you are ready or not. And ladies and gentlemen, some of you, as I'm talking to you now, you are in your evil days. Listen, you will not die. You will not bow. You will not be grounded. I see you standing gallantly. I see you standing tall. I see you facing the opposition. And I see you winning this battle also. Lift your voice, shout, I receive it. I receive it. Hallelujah. Amen. So that you may be able to stand against the evil day. He said, finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. So the reason why you need an empowerment is that an empowerment in the might of God causes you to stand in the evil day. Amen. Don't let the preachers and their mirror shoes fool you. Preachers also have their wahala. And let me say this as a disclaimer. 
Don't live your life following Facebook and following Twitter and following Instagram. That is a fake way. By the time somebody is standing by a car and has written, oh, God has been good, go and look for the owner of the car. <laughs> in our church, our church is located in a very, a very funny area in Tema here. We are, we are sandwiched by uh, a lot of these prostitutes, Nigerians and Ghanaians and those guys. They are all already have hostels around. So God decided to just uh, mess me up by sending me to the, the, these guys. See, so one day on, on, on a very on a very uh, a very spiritual Sunday morning, I parked my car. I was in the in the office preparing to get into the service, and then the Spirit of God told me to come to the window. And I, when I got there, one of these prostitutes was standing next to my car and was taking a picture, and she was doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, this, this, lady, uh, this lady will go and post it on Facebook and write, oh, God has been good. But nobody knows that is the prophet's car. Imagine, <laughs> you see. <laughs> so, so by the time... By the time you guys think that some of you watch Facebook and then you see a colleague of yours and a colleague of you, and you know, you know Photoshop, don't you? You know Photoshop that you can even Photoshop your background and 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 and, 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 and put uh, the city of New York as your background, and then they will write, "Oh, having a nice time in New York." Meanwhile, that one will be in Kikuyu, in Kisumu, Kisumu. That one will be in Kisumu. So it's in Kisumu, and you're already looking at that person on Instagram and say, hey, my God, God, why have you done this to me? I used to be better than this lady when we were in the college. Now she's in New York. I am in Kisumu. I am in, uh, imagine. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So don't, don't be driven by what you see on on. On, on social media. That's the point I'm trying to make. And let me say this and then we'll begin. Are you, are you guys enjoying the service, the sermon at all? I, I, really, yeah. 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 I really want to put a few things in your spirit. You see, so I'm just telling you that evil day comes at every one of us. Evil day comes at every one of us. Hear this, and this will bless you so much. The fact that you are in the evil day, okay, does not mean that you will lose in the evil day. You see, God is such an amazing God. Bible says something very interesting. He says, and, and Stella, look for that scripture. Mm -hmm. He says, had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see, that means that God wrought his all-time best plan within the cru crucifixion of his son. Now, as they were crucifying him on Gogota's cross, they stretched him wide, they hung him high, the sun will not shine, he was naked, they trusted his side with a spear. Then Jesus gave up the ghost and died. Now, when he died, hell was rejoicing. Hell didn't know that Jesus was dying for us to emerge as sons of God. So, instantly, Perception is very important in every man's battle. Perception. When you are in your battle, I want you to redefine your perception that you are not in this to be disgraced. Amen. You are not in this to be grounded. It may look like it, but you are not in it to be grounded. It may seem like it that you are being disgraced. It may seem like it that you are getting disappointed, but you are not in it to be disappointed. I want you to redefine your focus, redefine your perception. He says, have they known they will not have crucified the Lord of glory, but as it is written, eyes have not seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of men the things which God had prepared for them that love him. So God literally prepare his greatest blessing, his greatest manifestation, his greatest will and purposes within the crucifixion of his son. And then when the enemy crucified Jesus, look at all of us here. We now call on the name of the Lord. And you know the name we call him Abba, Father. And that is just possible because he gave a son to get sons in the kingdom. Hear this. This battle of yours will produce a testimony. Amen. 
Oh, that was a prophecy spot for somebody you lost. It. I said, this battle of yours will produce a testimony. Amen. Uh, let me say it well. Those of you who don't believe it, just state your list. But if you believe it, say a better amen. This battle will produce a testimony. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me say this again. Let me say this again quickly. One of the things you, know, you have to know is that your evil day is what actually gives you stamina in God. You would listen, this God is so amazing. Eh? The greatest obsession of God is not to give you a car. A snake mm -hmm. without prayer and fasting, just by twisting her waist, got a car. <laughs> I was talking to a dear daughter of mine who, who, who lives far away in, in some country I don't want to mention. And uh, she's been going through some relationship challenge and she was telling me, hey, daddy, you know, I just bought my, my boyfriend a Range Rover. I was quiet on the phone for like 10 minutes. I said, hey, a man you have not yet married, you've already bought a Range Rover. Why won't this boyfriend do shakara on you? May you get men that will buy that will buy. no okay uh, 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 Dennis let me look for Dennis Dennis are you still there? <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> we we don't want men that women are buy as just Range Rover. We want women who are also God fearing after, after we don't want just Range Rover. Amen. Amen. Okay, so so this is what I'm saying that in, in your time of affliction. In your evil day, you have to redefine your focus. You have to redefine what we call the perception. I am in this because God will bless me. I am in this. And I was, um, I was making a point before I got to the Range Rover. And I'm saying to you, God is very much obsessed about us knowing him. That is why Paul says in the book of Philippians, says that I may know him. The knowledge of God is the, is, the, is, the most, is the most important obsession of God for us. So if God gives you a car, he gives you a house, he gives you whatever it is that he's giving you materially, and you don't know him, God will not be satisfied. God will rather you know him than to have these things and not know him. And hear this again. What he does brilliantly, and I have examined it time and time again in my work with him, that he wraps the knowledge of himself, or what we call the revelation of himself, to our affliction. How would you know he's a healer if you've never been sick? <laughs> that's that's, come on, think about it. How, how would you know that he's Jehovah Jireh? If you have not gone through a season where you need his providence, or you're in a season where you need his provision. So you see, that is what he does. He brings you law, supposedly, so that you can have a revelation. Mm -hmm. And the revelation that you have about God is what gives you credence in your walk with him. Can I say it again? The revelation you have about God is what gives you credence because you the only way to convince us that you know him is the revelation you have about him. And it is the, which, which revelation is what has kept you even in the season when others were giving up. You still held on. Why? Because you have a revelation about God. And that revelation only came to you, not because you read, but because you experienced it. And when did you experience it? In your season of affliction. You will not die in this disease. You will not die in this affliction. You will not be disgraced. I see a recovery coming upon you. I see a bouncing back coming upon you. I see a restoration coming upon you. I see the glory of God settling on your head. Hear this. I see a door opening for three of you. And this door will be a huge door this year for you. If you believe, shout, I receive it. I receive it. You getting blessed already? Oh yeah. Yes, so much. Okay, yes. let me just let me just bring a compass to my presentation. So he says that men always ought to pray and not faint. Listen, 
look at me. Again, I'm on the, on the preachers. For some time, we preached a certain message. And that message, after some time, I discovered that we rather messed people up. I don't mention names of any minister, but hear this. There was a time in Christendom we preached a message that suggested us to be superhumans. Okay? The demigods. We are gods. No two ways about it. But listen, when we say you are a god, it doesn't mean sovereignty lies on you. It doesn't mean that suddenly you have attained the status of almighty God. Unfortunately, many preachers could not strike the balance. And so the members felt that by saying they are gods, they, they saw themselves as superhumans. And so when storms rose up, their response to those storms were one of surprise. And by the time they regained consciousness, and by the time they had come out of denial, Satan had already done his worst in their lives. Guys, am I making sense? Are you listening to me? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Yes, we are. Yes, One we of are. the blessedness that you need to know as a child of God is that you should, you should know the blessedness of what we call dependency on God. He said that whereby we cry, Abba, Father, it should be a joy in your heart to be dependent on God, trusting in him for everything, every next step you take in life. Now, when you know that, yes, you are born again, but you also have tendencies, you also have weaknesses, you also have certain gates that you need God himself to keep, else you are going to be a prey to the teeth of the enemy. That understanding will cause you to live in the place of prayer. You understand? You see, I mean, some of these messages came and then they, they preached and they said, well, if you pray about the certain uh, issue once, don't pray about it again, only give thanks. Because when you pray about it, it's a sign of faithlessness. How many of you can identify with what I'm saying? Maybe I'm speaking to myself. So they told us, don't pray about the matter again. If you do that, it's a sign of prayerless. I ask you a question. If you were in Golgotha, no, if you were in Gethsemane, a place called the press, the oil press, and you heard Jesus pray one prayer three times, would you say it's a demonstration of faithlessness? Hmm. It was not a demonstration of faithlessness. The Bible says, uh, now, we, we, what we did was that we saw, we saw the enactment in, in Gethsemane. I mean, we were taken aback at the sight of Gethsemane because this was a mission. This was a battle of humanity and divinity as the humanity of Jesus was fighting his divinity. I mean, his divinity, we have seen the, how he raised Lazarus from the dead, how he commanded fishes, and how he did all those amazing miracles. But you see, his humanity didn't want to die. So in Gethsemane, he said, Father, this is not, if it is not, if it is your will, let this cup pass over me. He prayed the same prayer three times. That means he prayed the same prayer for three hours. And so we read in Hebrew, the Bible says that in the days of his flesh, he made vehement Christ on him that was able to save him. Look for that scripture. That was able to save him and he was head. Do you understand? And so ladies and gentlemen, when you pray about one thing more than once, you are persevering in prayer and it is a show that you understand dependency on God absolutely. Amen. Don't let the enemy convince you to say you don't have faith. As a matter of fact, take your time and study the book of Hebrews and chapter number 11. You see, 
Preachers are just interested in the first part. Oh, by faith, Sarah received strength to conceive. By faith, Moses did not allow himself to be called a child of a, ch a child of the Egyptians. By faith, um, Abraham was a father of faith. By faith, Rahab also. Blah blah blah. So we saw the exploits of faith. But take your time and read the 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 last verses of that chapter. He says it through faith. Men were sown asunder. Through faith, they denied or they rejected deliverance. Through faith, some of them suffered. So faith, ladies and gentlemen, has many emanations. It may be faith that, will, that is why a certain sickness will not come to you. It is also through faith. That is why a certain sickness will still come on to you, but you still survive that sickness. It is the same faith, but it has different manifestations. The issue is having done all, stand. Your ability to stand in the face of the many, 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 uh, uh, versatile manipulations of the enemy is what gives us credence to faith. Am I, oh Jesus, am I talking to somebody here? Mm -hmm. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are, prophet. Okay. Stella, what, what chapter is that? Hebrews chapter what? Chapter 5, verse 7. Chapter 5, verse 7. Now, this, this verse is talking about Jesus in Gethsemane. He says, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with what? Strong crying. I thought they said when you have faith, you won't cry. They said when you have faith, it is, it is faithless when you cry. But Bible said that Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from from death and was heard in that he feared hey 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 guys are you there oh you guys are quiet yes, just yes. the meeting you guys are not minding me we are muted Yes, okay. We are there. Okay. We are let here. Me, okay. Let me try. Let Stella read, read this, read, read that verse again. I want you to read it. I'm trying to get it, but, but uh, or, or verse seven. Who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong mm -hmm. crying and tears, and to him that was able to save him from death, uh -huh. and was in that he feared. No, that is Jesus. Jesus feared. You see, I'm just bringing you to a place where Satan will not throw that, what we call fearing that. That, D-A-R-T. That's what he does. He throws voices. He throws voices. And then he, he destroys the credence of your faith. He makes you think that you don't have faith. The Bible said that in the days of his flesh, Jesus was in the days of his flesh as a man. He offered up prayers. He offered up supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. And he was heard in that he feared. So you can, you can be afraid. I was, I was coming so you can fear. <laughs> Father, any spirit of Nigerian ascent that wants to sabotage my tongue, <laughs> die by fire. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. You see, so watch this, guys. He said that in that he feared. So yes, you can be afraid. It is not a faithlessness. It is what you do in fright. What you do in fear that makes it faithless. When Jesus was afraid, he prayed. When you are afraid, you worry. That is the difference. Am I talking to somebody? When you are afraid, you, you, you worry. Look for that scripture. I believe Philippians chapter 4. It says, be anxious for nothing. But in all things, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, he says, make your request known unto God. And the God of peace will garrison your heart 
Are you listening? So it is what you do in the fear that determines whether you are faithless or you have faith. Jesus was afraid. So to be afraid is normal. In fact, your Bible, Margaret, look for this scripture. It is in, in Psalms. Uh, the, David was praying. He says, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. So all of us here, we come to a place in our walk with God when we get overwhelmed. Listen, last year I was, well, yes, last year I was attacked. My health was attacked. People, there's a doctor of my Eunice. Eunice, do you remember the dream you had about me? Yes, prophet, I do. Eunice, this thing I've, I've, I've shared with the guys on this, on this broadcast, I've not told you in person. But listen, when Eunice shared that thing, when she shared that dream, she, I mean, it was so real. Eh? And at that time, I was going through a health challenge. Listen, I, I saw death coming. I saw death coming. And so when she also came to tell me that dream, I knew I was going to die. I didn't even trust my prayers. I couldn't even pray. I started calling. Those of you, those of you in, uh, in Kenya, and those of you are very close to Pastor Dan, call Pastor Dan Moragi. Pastor Dan Moragi will tell you. I called him. I said, Pastor Dan Moragi, Please pray for me. A daughter of mine, I believe in her prophecy so much. I believe in her dream. She just had a dream that I'm dying. Pastor Dan Moragi, pray for me. I call Pastor Dan to pray. I call the son of mine, Perez. Pray for me, Perez. And this, I told Perez, I said, Perez, you are my son. I want you to fast. Fast for seven days and pray for me. So Perez was praying. After seven days, I was hoping that he would come up and tell me, well, Prophet, it has been cancelled. After seven days, Perez says, Prophet, I've not seen any change. I said, eh, I'm dying. I'm dying. Oh, I'm dying. You know? So I have come to that place before when death was coming at me. I was afraid. But what did I, what did I do? Even when I didn't, even when I couldn't pray, I still called people to pray for me. Okay? Yes, Sarah, I was strong because I didn't want you guys to feel. Because as a leader, I have to be strong for you. I have to be strong. So what you do in the season of fear is so important. And looking back, I was just, last week, I was just thinking about something. When I look back, God truly has delivered me so many times. And he still does. So change your perception. Let me say this again. This affliction will not kill you. Amen. Amen. This affliction will not ground your destiny. Amen. Every Amen. man, listen, every man that will do well in triple jump, they, it is always said that that man must know the skill of stooping down, the skill of going down. If you can master the skill, it, it is the skill in going down that tells you how high you can rise. Listen to me. You just went down to rise higher. It is not to ground your destiny. Amen. Am I blessing you today? Oh, yes. Oh, it is so yes. important. It yes, is so important. you are blessing us. It is so important for you to understand these things because you see, ladies and gentlemen, the potency of your prayer is dependent on your ability to have a different mindset about this whole thing I'm talking to you about. Jesus says, men always ought to pray and not faint. Men always ought to pray. What does it mean, men? Men, it is talking about Jesus when he, when he was in the days of his flesh. In the days of his flesh. In the days of his flesh. Bible said that he made, he made, he offered prayers and supplication with strong crying. Sometimes they tell you, don't pray, don't, don't cry. But I tell you, listen, don't hold the tear back. Don't hold it back. Sometimes if you have to cry, cry. Sometimes if you, don't, if you don't want to talk to anybody, don't talk to anybody. Just shut yourself in the room. Yes, I want you to cry. But as you cry, pray and cry and pray. 
and cry and pray and cry and pray. If I cry some more and pray some more, before long, you will bounce back. I'm not talking to somebody here. He made yes. prayers and supplications with strong cry and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. Stella, add verse 8 to it. Verse 8 to it. Oh, I feel something is about to break loose here. I'm getting ready for us to pray. I want her to add verse 8 to it. And then we'll begin to pray. Jesus, some things will change. Some things will change. Mala de sen de libro cadenimiosa. La den de bosa. Yes. Watch this. Now, <laughs> you, you better love this Bible. Listen. Pastor Faith, how are you there? Lift up Pastor Faith is, has been raptured. Watch this. He says that who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong crying and tears unto him, that was able, watch this, the, the focus, in fact, what drove Jesus into prayer is that he knew God could save him or deliver him from death. That is why he went to Gethsemane. So that God would deliver him from death. But listen to the last bit of that verse 7. He says, and he was heard. He didn't say he was delivered from death. Have you gone into prayer hoping to get something and then you got a different answer from God? Yes. Oh, you, you, you better talk to me now. You, you better talk to me because see, this is where Satan masters his, 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 his advantage over us. He tells us, well, nothing is happening. You see, you went to pray. God should give you a husband. God should give you marriage, but nothing is happening. Have you forgotten before you started praying about marriage? You didn't even last one hour in prayer. But as we're praying, Father, I'm praying about my marriage. Now you can stand on your feet and pray for two hours. Now Satan is magnifying what you didn't get. And he is, he is, oh boy, you better hear this. He is covering what you got in prayer. You went in there, God delivered me from death. Jesus said, God, deliver me from death. If it is your will, deliver me from death. Bible said that, and he was heard. Can I announce to you the consolation to every prayer is not that you get what you went in there to, to pray for, but you have been heard. Yes. You have been heard. And before you bring to me your religious uh, placards to tell me, but prophet, I went there to pray for a car. I went there to pray for money. I went there to pray for house. Let me tell you something. He doesn't give you what you want. He gives you what you need. It is in what you need that you yourself will get what you want. There are some, God doesn't answer to, oh, read your Bible, Philippians. He said that, but my God will supply all your need, not your want. All your need, not your want. He supplies need so that as you are empowered in your need, you can go after what you want. Is it a good word? Yes, it is. Now he said that, and he was heard. Verse 8 says, though he were a son, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Talking about Jesus. There was a few charismatic witches and wizards. I'm a child of God. I'm a son of God. I know who I am. Listen. <laughs> the credence of your sonship is in the things you learn by the things you suffer. I'm telling you, a preacher who wants, who wants a good seed will not tell you this, but I'm going to tell you what I'm telling you now. He said that though he was a son, he lent obedience by the things he suffered. Sometimes you must go through something 
It is in what you go through that your glorious ministry is birthed. Hear this. Hear this. Your eternal self gains recognition when you are able to birth what will outlive you biologically. Big English. Let me explain. When you birth a ministry through what you suffer, what happens is that even when you transcend from this earthly realm, the ministry you birth will still be living and will be blessing others. So your impact on earth is not within. There's so much convenience message going on. So much. So the believers of this day don't have stamina. The least thing they are hurt and they are disappointed in God. The least thing they are disappointed in the prophet. They are disappointed. The least thing because they are so, they are so, they are so fluffed. They are so wishy-washy. Listen, I am in that place where I'm like Paul. I've learned to abound and to abase. I am in that place where I love God for who he is and not what he gives me. God has blessed me and there's no two ways about it. But I don't mind wearing just one shoe for a whole year. I don't mind wearing one trousers for a whole year. Because see, my heart is not after what he gives. My heart is to retain the dignity of his presence in my life. Am I talking to somebody here? Oh, yes. So he said that Jesus, though he was a son, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. Child of God, you may go through some things. You may not even know how to explain what you are going through, but they are all to give you credence about your placement in God. Tonight, we are going to pray. Amen. I don't know how many of you are ready for prayer. I am. I am. The Bible said that he he went to God in prayer and he was heard. He was heard. And his prayers were answered. Well, prophet, are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Obviously, God did not deliver him from death. He empowered him unto death. And it is through his death. That is why when he ascended, he led captivity captive. And then he gave gifts unto men. He was able to get all of us into his train because of his death. Because you know what? His assignment on earth was to die. If you must fulfill assignment, you go through some things. Mm -hmm. Hear this, and this will bless you. If you are writing, write this. Whatever you go through, that is so excruciating to the extent that it has the power to scar you. No scars. You go through scars all around your life. S-C-A-R. When God restores you, you begin to wear those scars as a badge. So that when people see the scar, they will know that you went through it, but you didn't end in it. You came out. And because you came out, they have such a living hope that if they are also going to go through the same thing, they also go up. They will also come out. Hear this. I see you blessing people. Amen. Not by your eloquence. Amen. But by the testimony of what you went through and came out. Amen. 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 You blessing many, Amen. many people by the testimony Amen. of what you went through and you came out. Oh, if Amen. you believe it, shout, Amen. I receive, I receive. 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 Amen. So I have showed you the preamble of prayer. I've showed you the Jesus story. Because as a man, he learned obedience by the things he suffered. So now we are going to pray. Some situations that I've refused to. Let me say this. I, I, I feel as I talk to you, he talks in me. Apostle James Amate, I welcome you, my brother. 
I love you so much. You know, I love you with everything in me, my intestines, my kidneys, my, my liver. The only thing I can't give you is my wife. That one. So she's too sweet. I can't give you that one. Amen. <laughs> so, people tell Apostle, Apostle James, I'm happy that I love him so much. <laughs> All right. Now, what was I saying? And Apostle James rudely interrupted me. <laughs> so I'm just going to say this. I forgot what I'm going to say, but I'm still going to say something. I, I know what I'm going to say will be something that I wanted to say when I wanted to say it. All right. So I'm just saying that some things that defy a solution, okay, chances are that you may just have to redefine how you look at them. Some situations that will not change. All you have to do is that change how you look at it. Okay? When you change how to look at the situation, you will see that that situation will begin to change for your people. Somebody clap your hands if you know you have been blessed. Oh, if you know you have been blessed. Let me, I want you to just, just, just uh, lead us to sing this song. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Please, don't, don't be singing audibly. Just be singing in your heart. I know you have a nice voice. Lord, I give you my heart. Wherever you are, just begin to my soul. follow it in your heart. Just prepare us to begin to pray. Mm. I live for you alone. Every heart Every moment I'm away, Lord, I'm away in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every night. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. My heart, I give you my soul. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul, Lord, have your way in me. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, Lord, have your way, have your way in me. Oh, Lord, I give you my heart. Give you my soul, or have your way in me. I want you to lift your voice, every one of you. Begin to lift your voice and begin to pray. Give begin to pray. Begin to pray. As he says, as he sings, just begin to pray. Emery, just go ahead, just sing, just go ahead and sing. Everybody pray. Just pray. You are praying for a new focus, a new perspective, 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 a new outlook about whatever you are going through. I just want you to pray. It makes a whole world of difference. If you can see through the lenses of God in the situation you are going through, come on, pray with me. 
Unmute yourself and let's pray. Guys, unmute, let's pray. Gada da do. Reba kason toro bo shanti la la ba kason tere tere la ba 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 ba. Tere bo shanti la la ba 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 ba. Kason tere gezi tere ba 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 ba. Reta riko kason tere gezi tere ba 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 ba. Tere 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 bo shanti la ba kusa. Lo kason tere ma kashin tere kason toro bo shanti tere ra ba hanzo ro kason tere. Kalaba <laughs> we are lifting a prayer. Listen, Zachariah chapter 12, verse number 10. That is going to be our prayer. And we are going to pray this prayer for 15 minutes. 15 minutes. If you know sitting down, worry you. Position your device somewhere and stand like I'm standing and we, we are praying. If I see you sitting and praying, I'll manifest wherever you are. <laughs> Zachariah and chapter 12, verse 10. This is the prayer. This is our prayer guide. Zachariah chapter 12, verse number 10. Something will happen. I feel it. He says, and I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit hey. of grace. Somebody mm -hmm. shout grace. 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 He says, I will pour the spirit of grace and supplication. Hallelujah. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced, and they shall mourn for him. Now listen, we are praying. There is there's a technology that pulls men out of the pit. There oh, is a God. technology that transitions a man from the place of nothingness to a place of relevance. We call it grace. And grace is a spirit. Many of you that have stayed at one place for so long, many of you that have stayed at one situation for so long, we are praying, Lord, release the spirit of grace upon me. Oh, yes. In the name of Jesus, Amen. come on, lift your voice Amen. and pray. Oh, God, I don't release shift. the grace of spirit. Oh, oh, spirit. Release, release the spirit me, of grace. Oh, Lord, yes, release the spirit of grace upon me. Please, 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I sense a move of grace. I sense a move of grace. Hey, Kadada Bahasa. I hear prophetically strange grace. Strange grace. Paul says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. He says, but our sufficiency is of God. Adi Maha. Hey! Linda Paul, I want you to sing Aka Akaya. Aka Jehovah Emema. Ha Sing that song. Aduni Miasa. Akaya. Yes, Lord. God bless you, Linda. God bless you. Now watch this. Now this is our last prayer. You Listen, I want you to pray this last prayer like everything depends on that prayer. First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10. Peter said something and it is very powerful. He says, but the God of all grace, the God of all grace, there is such a thing as all grace. The literal meaning or the literal rendition of this particular terminology is that there is grace for everything under the sun. There is grace for marriage. There is grace for business. There is grace for increase. You are going to pray today and you are going to harvest the particular grace you need in that particular area of your life. And you are saying, let grace be supplied for that area. Is it a good prayer? Amen. Is it a yes. good prayer? <laughs> Listen, people. Yes, tonight, tonight, I sense a move in my spirit. 
that somebody will see tangible testimonies. Amen. Tangible testimonies. Jesus. He said that, but the God of all grace, who have called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after ye have suffered a while. Listen, your suffering should not last long. It is suffering for a while. Why has it prolonged? The reason for your suffering, the duration in the scope of God was for a while. Why is it that for 10 years you are still where you are? No progress. He said that by the grace of God, he has called us unto his eternal glory. He says, after ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, established, strengthened, and settle you. Hear this. You are praying, and this is the mystery of the grace you are praying about. This is the mystery. The grace will perfect you. The grace will establish you. The grace will strengthen you, and the grace will settle you. Lift your voice and say, my father, as I pray, I release grace for that testimony in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and begin to pray quickly. On mute and pray. On mute and pray. On mute and pray. Some of you are still muted. On mute and pray. On mute and pray. about Sarabos, <laughs> <laughs> 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me pray, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the release of grace. Thank you for the release of grace. Listen, I don't want you to stop when we finish the broadcast. I want you to pray, continue to pray. And still, I'll project the scripture again. The scripture in First Peter. 5 verse 10. Oh, there's a grace. There's a grace. Say, but the God of all grace, who has called us unto his eternal glory. Listen, you are not called unto shame. You are not called unto disappointment. You are not called unto sickness is pain. And therefore, anything that doesn't look like glory, grace has to be manifested on it. Amen. Tonight, listen to me. The Bible said, after you have suffered a while, so whatever suffering you are going through, financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, whatever suffering you are going through, God calls it a light affliction. It means that it, its duration has expired. It is time for you to enter your glory. He says that after you have suffered a while, the grace, the God of all grace, will make you perfect, will make you established, will strengthen you and settle you. I decree over 49, 46 people on this call. Receive the grace. Receive the grace Amen. for manifestations in your life. Amen. I declare, receive grace for a turnaround. Amen. Receive grace for your next level. Amen. Receive Amen. grace Amen. to manifest greatness. Amen. Receive Amen. grace for prosperity. Amen. In the name Amen. of Jesus. Amen. May it be the delight of men to bless you this week. 
Amen. I receive. May it be the delight of men to empower you this week. Amen. May it be the delight of men to favor you this week. Amen. Hear this. May you be protected against any plague. Amen. May you be protected against any satanic attack. Amen. Anyone on the hit list of Satan, I command your name deleted. Amen. I command your name deleted. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Anyone that is a satanic target, I pray. You are no longer that target in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Any strange altar demanding blood, I declare, let that altar catch fire now in Jesus. Amen. 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 There is Amen. somebody, your spine area has been aching. I declare, receive healing in that area of your body. Amen. Receive healing in that area of your body. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I command swellings to leave your bodies. I command hypertension, leave your body. Amen. I command growth, I command cancers, I command diabetes, I command HIV, come out of your bodies. Amen. In the name of Jesus. An era where men are making nonsense of the power of God, I declare you receive the power of God. Amen. I say you receive the power of God. Amen. I say you receive the power of God. I receive. I hear in the realm of the spirit there are 27 people. I hear financial grace is coming on you. Amen. I receive. I don't know who that person is, but I hear financial grace. Financial grace. Financial grace. Financial grace. Financial grace. Financial grace. I receive money. Take it in the name of Jesus. I take it by fire. And anybody on this call that is under satanic radar, under satanic surveillance, I delete your name from every satanic Amen. list. Amen. And I blindfold every demonic telescope watching your Amen. movement. And I Amen. break every monitoring gadget policing your Amen. destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hosanna, the Lord says I should tell you, the Lord says I should tell you, you are entering a season of manifestation. Because Amen. your season Amen. of dryness is over. Amen. Amen. The Lord says your season of hanging prophecy is over. Amen. This is your season for manifestation. Amen. Take it in the name Amen. of Jesus. I receive it. Take, it. Take it in the name of Jesus. I receive Amen. it, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank, Thank you, Spirit Holy Spirit. God. There is Amen. somebody you have this, this fear, this fear, Fear that you are not going to make it in life. Fear this. That, that thing is the lie of the enemy. I see Amen. grace coming upon you. Amen. You will make it in destiny. Amen. In the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. Listen to me. I want you to keep this prayer. First Peter chapter 5 and verse number 10. Push it more. Push it for the next 30 minutes or the next 40 minutes before you sleep. Something incredible must happen to your life. The Lord bless you. The Lord Amen. keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious Amen. unto you. For those Amen. Of you who would want the recording, I'm sure they will make it available on the page. For those of you who want to join us on the page, also send me your request. I will be glad to put you on the page. The Lord bless you so much. Hear this. When we enter the month of April, the first five, the first four days of April, first, second, third, fourth, it's a fasting. First, second, third, fourth is what? It's fasting. 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 You are fasting. So get ready. Get ready. I will communicate details to you later. But the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. You have any seed to give. As usual, the account is there. Global Prophetic Network account details. The Mpesa is there. The Momo, the Wave, the Word Remit, and the PayPal account is also there. There is a project I am embarking on. We've acquired. A, a place and we are erecting our revival tent our revival tent today i was on the site with the surveyor and uh, the uh, the designer the architect is also designing the plan and all that by by next week god willing we are starting the foundation for a revival tent if the lord touches you to be part of this building please send in your seed because it is your generous giving that causes us to be able to do what we do. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord causes his face to shine upon you. 
and be gracious unto you. If you know you have been blessed, I want you to type, I am blessed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So I will see you same time next week. Shalom. God bless you. Amen.